Good morning. Welcome you to St. John's for worship here in the sanctuary or online. Join us as we seek to begin anew following Christ each day. Join us after church today for both fellowship hour and to help take down and put away our Christmas decorations. We invite our preschool and elementary age children to join us this Friday, January 13th, for Friday fun night from six o'clock to eight o'clock p.m. We'll be asking why scientists followed a star to meet Jesus and learn how God welcomes everyone. Enjoy songs, a movie, crafts, and a taco supper. Parents and grandparents are welcome to join us or take the evening off. Our food pantry team will be serving next on January 16th, doing setup in the morning and serving clients in the evening from 5.30 to 7 p.m. Please see Lana Snyder, our food pantry coordinator, if you would like to help. Looking ahead, please plan to join us for a lessons and carol service based on the Sermon on the Mount on February 12th and for our Mardi Gras party on Saturday, February 18th. Please read the announcement sheet for other pertinent information. We'll be passing the peace later on in the worship service. But now for our community, let me share this news. It is with sadness and yet with hope in the resurrection that we acknowledge the death of our brother, Ethan Rice. Arrangements have been made at Gilbert Funeral Home for visitation with his family at 10 a.m. and a memorial service at 11 a.m. Today, we remember and give thanks for Ethan and his wife for their faithful participation here at St. John's, for their friendship, and for the beautiful woodwork Ethan left for us to contemplate and enjoy. So we have two in the back of the church that you might want to take a look at as you leave worship today. And there was also this one of Jesus with the disciples at the Last Supper that was here in my office when I came to St. John. So you can take a chance to look at that during fellowship hour. Blessed are the dead who die in the Lord. May they rest from their labors. And now let's settle our hearts and minds as we enter more deeply into worship.
Let's stand for Thanksgiving for baptism. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the fountain of living water, the rock who gave us birth, our light, and our salvation. Amen. Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are clothed with God's mercy and forgiveness. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning your spirit moved over the waters, and by your word you created the world, calling forth life in which you took delight. Through the waters of the flood you delivered Noah and his family. Through the sea you led your people Israel from slavery into freedom. At the river your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By water and your word, you claim us as daughters and sons, making us heirs of your promise and servants of all. We praise you for the gift of water that sustains life. And above all, we praise you for the gift of new life in Jesus Christ. Shower us with your spirit and renew our lives with your forgiveness, grace, and love. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord in the unity of the Holy Spirit now and forever. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all.
Let us pray. O God, our Father, at the baptism of Jesus, you proclaimed him your beloved Son and anointed him with the Holy Spirit. Make all who are baptized into Christ faithful to their calling to be your daughters and sons, and empower us all with your Spirit, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from Isaiah. Here is my servant who I uphold my chosen in whom my soul delights. I have put my spirit upon him. He will bring forth justice to the nations. He will not cry or lift up his voice or make it heard in the street. A bruised reed he will not break and a dimly burning wick he will not quench. He will faithfully bring forth justice. He will not grow faint or be crushed until he has established justice on the earth and the coastlands waiting for his teaching. Thus says God, the Lord, who created the heavens and stretched them out, who spread out the earth and what comes from it, who gives breath to the people upon it and spirit to those who walk in it. I am the Lord, I have called you in righteousness. I have taken you by the hand and kept you. I have given you as a covenant to the people, a light to the nations to open the eyes that are blind, to bring out the prisoners from the dungeon, from the prison, those who sit in darkness. I am the Lord, that is my name. My glory I give to no other, nor my praise to idols. See, the former things have come to pass, and new things I now declare. Before they spring forth, I tell you of them. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm 29, please read responsibly. Ascribe to the Lord, you gods. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due God's name. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. The glory of God thunders. The Lord is upon the mighty waters. The, the voice, voice of the Lord is a powerful voice. The voice of the Lord is a voice of splendor. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedar trees. The Lord breaks the cedars of Lebanon. The Lord makes Lebanon skip like a calf and Mount Hermon like a young wild ox. The voice of the Lord bursts forth, lighting flashes. The voice, the voice of the Lord, the Lord shakes, shakes the wilderness. wilderness. The, the Lord, Lord shakes the wilderness, wilderness of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord makes the oak trees writhe and strips the forests bare. And in a temple, the Lord's are cry, all are crying glory. The, the Lord, Lord sits enthroned above the flood. flood. The, the Lord, Lord sits enthroned as king forevermore. O oh Lord, give strength to your people. Give them, O oh Lord, the blessings of peace. A reading from Acts. Peter began to speak to Cornelius and his household. I truly understand that God shows no partiality but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John announced, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power how he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. 
We are witnesses to all that he did both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree, but God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. According to Matthew. Lord, you, o Lord. Jesus came from Galilee to John at the Jordan to be baptized by him. John would have prevented him, saying, I need to be baptized by you. Do you come to me? But Jesus answered, Let it be so now, for it is proper for us in this way to fulfill all righteousness. Then John consented. And when Jesus had been baptized, just as he came up from the water, suddenly the heavens were opened to him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting on him. And a voice from heaven said, This is my Son, the Beloved, with whom I am well pleased. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. So let's start out with some questions. 
How do you handle beginnings? So for instance, when you wake up in the morning and face the beginning of a new day, do you want to take a shower and get dressed first? Or do you want to get a cup of coffee and eat breakfast first? I see some coffee people nodding. When you face the beginning of a new project, do you want to check your emails and texts and make sure your workspace is neat and tidy? Or do you want to just dive in? What do you think? Barbara, what are you saying? Dive in. Dive in. Okay. <laughs> it depends on where I am. If I'm upstairs, I want everything neat and tidy. If I'm at home at my desk, I've given up. Okay. Last one. When you start off at the beginning of a trip, are you one of those people who carefully plan where you're going to stay, you chart out your route, and you calculate your budget? Or do you hop into your car with just a general idea about where you want to go? Huh? I've got how many planners? How many just jump in the cars? Yeah, Chris, I'm not surprised. Okay. Now, more importantly than these kinds of habits, let me ask this. When you are at a beginning point in your life, whether it's the beginning of the morning or the evening or something large and big and life-changing, what goes on in your heart and mind? Do you feel bored or excited? Do you feel inadequate or like you're up for the challenge? Do you feel afraid or hopeful? Most importantly of all, when you're at a beginning, do you ask for God's help and presence? Perhaps our gospel lesson today can help us think about the way we face our own small and large beginnings. Earlier in Matthew, we hear how Joseph decides to make a beginning with Mary and her baby boy. He decides to be a protective father. Then we find John the Baptist out at the Jordan River making his own kind of beginning with God and with others. God is up to something big, John the Baptist says. So come to the Jordan River, confess your sins, and let me wash you clean. Let me help you start again, begin again, fresh with God, find forgiveness, so you're ready at any point for the new things that God is doing in the world. Now, next, in Matthew's gospel, we find our story for today, Jesus at his own beginning point. He is aware that God's kingdom is breaking into the world. He is aware that God is pushing him and filling him with an urgent desire to be part of that kingdom. But how does Jesus start? How does he set out? Well, as Matthew tells the story, Jesus first begins by making the journey from Galilee in the north down to Judea in the south to find John and John's followers by the Jordan River. Jesus arrives and looks around to see other people who have the same desire to be ready for God to break in and change the world. Now later, during his time in the wilderness, Jesus will need to do his own individual soul-searching introspection. But for now, Jesus chooses to begin by joining with others who also long for and anticipate God's coming kingdom. He comes to draw from and to contribute to the collective energy and excitement, the collective wisdom and courage. Now, we all know how that works. So look around at each other. 
look around not only at the people who are here in the sanctuary, but at the people who aren't here, who are also part of our community, even the people who have left us and are part of the church triumphant. Let's remember the collective strength that we draw from one another now, as we do finally stand, to greet one another, to share the peace. Oh, let's share the peace with one another. Let's give thanks for one another as companions, as fellow searchers and followers of Christ. You can be seated. So that was the first thing. Be with others. Second thing. In this story about Jesus' beginnings, Jesus insists that John should baptize him. Jesus tells John, if there's anything in my own heart, regardless of what you think, there's anything in my own heart or in the heart of others that might put a distance between me and God or between me and others, then I've got to let it go. Let me humble myself then and set aside any perceived or real pride, arrogance, any need to control, any fear, any greed for comfort, any lack of hope, any resistance to you, God. Wash them away, John, so that I can be right with the world around me and right with God. Now, we try to do the same thing ourselves when we begin our worship together each week. We do that either with a thanksgiving for baptism or with confession and forgiveness. We remember with thanksgiving for baptism that we are people washed clean from our sin and claimed by God. And with confession and forgiveness, we try our best to lay aside whatever separates us from one another and from God. But back to the story. How does God respond to this beginning that Jesus makes? As Jesus comes up out of the cleansing waters of the Jordan River, God's voice from heaven announces for all to hear, this is my beloved, my beloved child with whom I am well pleased. God names and claims Jesus. God authorizes Jesus for the mission ahead. Claimed as God's beloved child, Jesus can find the courage to head back up north to Galilee, to teach those who are hungry for wisdom, to teach those who are hungry for food, to restore those who are in need of healing and to open doors for those who are in need of welcome. As I think about this story, I wonder if the way Jesus chooses to begin his adult ministry might help us to think about the way we make our own beginnings. Our individual beginnings range from our daily waking breath when we open our eyes to major beginnings that come our way only a few times in our lives. Either way, we get to decide whether or not we want to begin each new day with God. We get to decide whether we will join with others and lay down our burdens as we seek God's help to face the new beginnings of new jobs, new relationships, new life circumstances. Now, our congregational beginnings also range from our weekly beginning. We say we're going to begin our week with worship to decisions with longer lasting implications, decisions about the care and use of our building, about our leadership, 
about the directions our ongoing mission in the world will take. Let me give you a for instance. For instance, we stand at the beginning of new work and new opportunity here at St. John's. As many of you know, the water supply line and the sink in the ladies' bathroom burst on the Monday before Christmas. Water gushed out into the hallway, into the kitchen, and through the ceiling into the nursery room below in the basement. In the basement, water covered the floor in the nursery room where we have all our Christian Ed stuff stored away. It flowed out into that hallway, all the way down to the boiler room. You could say that our building had an unexpected baptism. If you read our most recent newsletter, you know about this Christmas flood of 2022 and the cooperative and determined way our St. John's tank continue, contained and then cleaned up the water. Now our council faces a new beginning. How will we use the help of insurance to best take care of our building? How will we look at our building as a gift from God, a resource for us to bring people together for all kinds of renewal, much in the way that John brought people together for baptism at the Jordan River? Put another way, how will we look at our building as a gift from God, a resource for us to use as we carry out our mission to feed people body, mind, and spirit? On Tuesday night, our council will begin, and notice I intentionally use the word begin, because it first is a beginning, and secondly, because we're gonna be at it for more than one month. We're gonna to begin to consider our options and opportunities. As Jesus realized he needed to be with other seekers as he made his own beginnings, I hope that we will draw from each other's longings to see what God can do with us. I hope that we will draw upon each other's wisdom and determination to make wise and hopeful decisions. And like Jesus, who was humble enough to ask for baptism, I hope that we will begin this new chapter in our life together humbly as well. Humble enough to ask God to wash us clean of whatever gets in the way between us and each other, between us and our community, between us and God. I hope that whatever we decide and do in the weeks and months to come, individually or as a congregation, God's presence will help us feel excited and engaged, adequate, and capable, hopeful, and courageous as we take up the challenges and tasks before us. I hope that whatever new beginning we make, God will look on us as God looked on Jesus and say, these are my beloved children in whom I am well pleased. Let us stand for the hymn of the day.
With the whole church, let us confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. In the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please remember the following people in prayer this week. Anne, Logan, Gabriel, Richard, Bernadette, John, Brian, Dennis, Warren and family, Chris, Ada, Celine, Paul, Lori, Tom, Brian, Susan, Carol and family, Clifford, Mary Jane, Gloria, Jamie, Pat, Connie, Butch, Lucille, Carol, Bonnie, Jean, and their family, and the family of Ann Richards, who has passed away. May she rest from her labors. Called together to follow Jesus, we pray for the church, the world, and all in need. Calling God, you speak with power to your church. Open our hearts and minds to the new things that you are declaring. Strengthen bishops, pastors, deacons, lay leaders, and teachers of the faith. Equip the baptized for your reconciling and redeeming work. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Renewing God, you provide the waters of the earth, and in Jesus' baptism, you reveal the waters of life. Cleanse and protect oceans, rivers, and watersheds, particularly our own Lehigh River. Bring relief to parched lands and to communities without access to safe water. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Righteous God, you never weary of establishing justice. Increase cooperation and constructive dialogue between nations. Guide local, national, and international authorities to govern with equity, vision, and integrity. We pray for those in the military service, for peacemakers, and for our enemies. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Abiding God, your, merciful, your mercy is steadfast. Give sanctuary to people who flee from oppression, war, poverty, and famine. Sustain health care workers, caregivers, first responders, counselors, and all who help and heal. Comfort those who are grieving or experiencing crisis. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Blessing God, in Christ you gather the beloved community. Kindle the gifts of your spirit in your people. Accompany the newly baptized, those recently ordained, and in the beginning, a new ministry. Inspire synodical leaders and congregational councils to serve with imagination and wisdom. Merciful God, receive our prayer. For all experiencing winter storms and significant weather events, for all places in our nation and across the world without access to safe water. For the eternal rest of Pope Emeritus Benedict and for all who mourn his death, merciful God, receive our prayer. Promising God, 
your faithfulness endures throughout all generations. We give thanks for those who have died in Christ, trusting that we will be united with them and all the saints in Christ's resurrection life. Merciful God, receive our prayer. We bring to you our needs and hopes, O God, trusting your wisdom and power revealed in Christ crucified. Amen. Trusting that God is always willing to begin anew with us and with the world around us, trusting that God shows no partiality, but loves the whole world and claims everyone as a child of God, trusting that God will use our gifts to bring light and peace to those who need it. Let us bring our gifts to God. Let's stand to sing. God, you break the bonds of injustice and let the oppressed go free. Receive these offerings in thanksgiving for all your works of merciful power and shape us as people for your justice and freedom. You we magnify and adore through Jesus, our Savior. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give.
Holy One, the beginning and the end, the giver of life. Blessed are you for the birth of creation. Blessed are you in the darkness and in the light. Blessed are you for your promise to your people. Blessed are you in the prophet's hopes and dreams. Blessed are you in Mary's openness to your will. Blessed are you for your son, Jesus Christ, the word made flesh. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. With this bread and cup, we remember your word dwelling among us, full of grace and truth. We remember our new birth in his death and resurrection. We look with hope for his coming. Come, Lord Jesus. Holy God, we long for your spirit. Come among us, bless this meal. May your word take flesh in us. Awaken your people, fill us with your light. Bring the gift of peace on earth. Come, Holy Spirit. All praise and glory are yours, Holy One of Israel, Word of God incarnate, power of the Most High, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Come and taste the joy of God.
Holy One, we thank you for the healing that springs forth abundantly from this table. Renew our strength to do justice, love kindness, and journey humbly with you. Amen. The God who faithfully brings justice and breaks the oppressor's rod, bless, strengthen, and uphold you today and always. Amen. Jesus. Thanks be to God.